she gets united. Like, what we gotta do is meet everybody in 149th Street at the bench. It's time to hop back into the Instagram DMs and check out the graffiti that you guys submitted on over to me. We have uh, just one or two in order to go ahead and take a look at. And for those of you guys who are new to this, we're gonna go ahead and rate the graffiti you submitted on a scale from 1 to 10. Now, if you get a low number, don't take it too personally. Not only is this all for good fun, it's a good way for us to learn and teach. But it's also something that we've all experienced. We all had to start somewhere and none of us started good at graffiti. So no need to get like self-conscious or feel bad about a low ranking number. Hopping into the very first one. Worms, look at this. Look at this, some good old character work. Can we open, oh my God, another video. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm loving the videos, man, I'm loving it. This is sick. All right, this is a huge pet peeve of mine. That <laughs> take, take of it what you will. But when you have a form like this, it needs to actually abide by the form properly. When you have something like a bone stabbing through another object, it reacts in much the same way that anything else would. We can actually look at my sleeve as an example of this, right? My arm would be that bone from the image, and then the sleeve would be how the skin would wrap around that. And it's very much the same thing. It abides by the form. You can tell that the sleeve is wrapping around my arm because it's wrapping around in this direction, as opposed to wrapping around like this, which suddenly implies that there's an opposing force pushing it against its will. That's what you've drawn up there. The forms are not going in the direction that they should, which creates a little bit of a form contradiction. So do keep that in mind. It takes away a lot of realism and you did so much beautiful work establishing your forms and your realism and then you immediately flatten the image by having the bone interact in that way. But it still looks phenomenal, still looks beautiful. Whoever you did this mural for, they, they definitely, definitely are a happy customer. Sanic, here we go. I see you're trying to get some more kind of like 3D graffiti aesthetics here, but two major things. If you're going to go ahead and dedicate to realistic shading, then you have to dedicate to realistic forms. You don't get to have it both ways, right? So here you do some realistic forms on the bottom, but there's a couple of issues with this. You immediately go against that when you add the 3D as you typically would for graffiti. Graffiti does not at all utilize realistic forms, not by any stretch of the imagination. Sure, as an individual graffiti artist, you can put realistic forms and use that for graffiti, no doubt. Plenty of people do it, but these portions right here look more like typical 3D in graffiti as to where these portions obviously look like realistic forms. Now, I realize you probably had a lack of paint, a lack of, you know, values to work with, but take that into consideration before you dedicate to something like this. That exact issue of not having enough paint or not having the right paints is exactly why I haven't done pieces like this on walls. Now, the second thing that this ends up doing is you have to pretty much abide by perspective, especially when you establish a realistic form as a base here. This realistic form should be in perspective, and then your graffiti also has to follow suit because you've tethered everything to this base that is supposed to have perspective. Also, for the amount of light this is receiving, these would not be pitch black. Once again, probably a lack of paint, I understand that, but we're gonna have to give this a good two out of 10. Here we got a piece from Dial, D-I-L-E. And in this piece, the letter structures aren't really refined. They're not really defined at all, pretty much. And what's happening here is you're sacrificing all of the fundamentals in graffiti for the sake of style. Now, this is problematic. And when you do this as an artist in any art form, doesn't matter what art form you're doing it in, when you add style without knowing the fundamentals, what you end up doing is you sacrifice the very fundamentals the more you begin to add style to it. So when you sacrifice the fundamentals for style, what ends up happening is you end up sacrificing style along with it, because style is just the exaggeration of the fundamentals. That's all it is. So for this one, we're also going to give this a good 2 out of 10, and I would say keep it simple, practice the basics. Check out this piece from Score here. This is beautifully done. I love the way this came out. But you know, you know what? First things first, let's check the highlights, because it seems like on this series, a lot of people get highlights wrong. So a really quick pass, just glancing over this, not being too like strict about it, it seems like the highlights are pretty okay, seems like they're right. And the first thing that jumps off at me here is this little part right here. Now I know this is meant to be a lowercase e, this is meant to be an extrusion from the basic box that comes out from this side over here, which fair enough, but this heavily distorts letter structure. And that is something we gotta go ahead and consider. You could have very easily have done the very same thing and actually boosted flow if you were to chop off right here and just have a little tiny protrusion, just a little, little tiny one, nothing crazy, and then just turn the rest of this into a chip because you already have a chip over here that is exactly what you would have ended up with on this side. On top of that, this would have done something else as well. This would have allowed the 3D to breathe just a little bit more because you would have had a gap between the new chip and the little protrusion from the letter E over here. You would have also have had to have adjusted the bottom part to accommodate that, but that would have been easy enough to do. You wouldn't have struggled with that. We can easily see that with how skilled you are with your letter structures in the first place. Overall, really nice piece. I'd give this a solid 8 out of 10. I like that a lot. Jacob, let's see what you got for me, buddy. I'm loving the real wild kind of goofy look that you went for here. Now, I almost wish you would have filled in these empty areas here because I feel like it would have served the piece a lot better, a lot more that way. And let me kind of explain what I mean by that, right? With the transparent areas, it almost looks like you went for a transparent cup sort of look where the green goop is filling in this transparent container. 
But you didn't really go all in on that aesthetic. You didn't illustrate the green liquid to be inside of a cup, so that's not there. And you didn't illustrate the transparent area to look as if it's actually a container. So that's not there either. Not to mention the fact that you didn't do the transparent effect enough in order to kind of justify that in the first place. As four of the letters here don't have any transparency on them. So for that reason, we'll give that a good five out of 10. Next piece right here, we're gonna say keep it simple, practice the basics. We can see right here with your hand style, all of your problems come from your stylized tag. You really have to get that hand style down pat before you can even hope to have style for your pieces. That is crucial because if you don't understand the fundamentals for the tag, all those same fundamentals are still there for your pieces, meaning you gotta get them down pat for the tag first. So we'll give that a good two out of 10. Joke. Oh man. Oh dude. Yo. Oh my God. We, we, we had spoken before. I, I remember this piece. I remember this. Guys, I am tempted. I'm tempted to give out another 10 out of 10 because I love that backlit 3D. It almost gives a kind of subsurface scattered aesthetic to it. And you guys know how obsessed I am with subsurface scattering. This is hitting all my heartstrings, man. I love this. This is absolutely gorgeous. And you know what I love even more? They shaded this and they didn't use like a transparent black or something like that. They used a different color that represents the background, which is really, really good. Granted, you do need to have like the paint for that, which not everybody has, but he did and he, he knew to go ahead and make that adjustment. Beautiful, beautiful work. Phenomenal job. You knocked this out the park. That's a 9.5 or a 10 out of 10. I'll let you guys decide in the comments. Here we have another example of keep it simple practice the basics. You gotta get down those fundamentals before you can have style. I'll probably make a video about this, but just, just to very quickly go ahead and put this out there, no new artist in any art form has style. Style is not something any artist inherently has. It's something that you craft and to have style means to illustrate your knowledge of the fundamentals. That's what style is. That's how style is created. That's how style functions. So keep it simple, practice the basics. Basic print font, hand styles, and straight letters, that's gonna be where you get all your progress from, man. Aw, oh, man. These right here are some, you know, all right, hold up. There are some throw-ups you see, and you, you, you see the throw-up, and you immediately know that person gets up. That person definitely gets up. There's a certain aesthetic. You can tell when a throw-up has been pampered versus when a throw-up has been crafted in the streets. And there's lessons. There's aesthetic certain things done in the throw up specifically for the utility purpose of it versus this throw up looks pretty as a throw up and I dig it I like it also Revs is a graffiti legend is this supposed to be an R or is this supposed to be P Evs I'll give benefit of the doubt because I've seen people with that before <laughs> alright I've seen people with a period in the middle of their throw up he's got it as structure over here but I've seen it as a period before so I'm just giving benefit of doubt here I'm also giving benefit of the doubt in hopes that it's not Revs because Revs is a graffiti legend regardless sick throw up definitely not 9.5 out of 10. I love it. I'll be honest. I gotta end the video here because I am starving, man. I, I, you know what? I'm gonna go to I'm gonna go to like Red Robin some Fridays. Get me a real nice juicy burger. I'm kind of excited about it. So I'll catch you guys back here next week. But before you go, if you want to learn more about graffiti, check out the books I published in the description down below, and check out the best how to do graffiti tutorials right up here with some more graffiti content right over here. I'll see you guys next. Uh, how did I forget to do my YouTube outro? I'll see you guys next week. Thanks for watching.